Hi, I'm Brian Hansel. I'm an outdoor photographer and landscape photographer living in Graham Ray, Minnesota. This morning, I'm out pretty early shooting bugs in my front yard. So let's go see what we get. So the reason that I'm out early this morning is because the bugs are a little less active. So the cold weather overnight tends to slow them down so they're a little bit easier to photograph. I like to come out after the sun breaks the horizon of my tree line. That way I get a little bit of sun uh, in the background of my pictures, but not directly on the bugs. Today's equipment is pretty simple. I have a 105 millimeter macro lens. And then so I can get a little bit closer of focus, I have an 18 millimeter extension tube. So this extension tube is pretty handy. If you don't own a macro lens, you can buy some extension tubes and add them to whatever telephoto you have. So if you have a 70 to 200, 70 to 300, put a couple of extension tubes onto that and then attach it to the camera and you'll end up with a 70 to 200 uh, macro lens. Uh, at least something that will be capable of shooting insects. So I do like to use a specific macro lens plus an extension tube because it allows you to get very close up to whatever you're photographing and uh, see the details inside in, on the insects. So like their hair and their eyeballs and stuff. So you could still use it without, you can use a macro lens without an extension tube. It just doesn't allow you to get as close to the insect as with an extension tube does. And then this is a digital, um, a digital mirrorless camera by Nikon and you could use any uh, camera you have so you don't have to have this specific one so real simple equipment um, and it doesn't cost a whole lot to get into this if you already own a telephoto and a camera extension tubes are pretty inexpensive so it's an inexpensive way to get into a fun hobby that allows you to relate to the world see what's going on in the natural environment and find nature right in your own backyard this first location that I'm at is always good for skipper butterflies. So for some reason, they like to hang out here all night long. And then when you come in the morning, they're just a little docile, easy to photograph. I actually think it's probably the same insects that are hanging out at the same place every night. And they get pretty used to me now because um, I've been out a couple of mornings. So it's a really great way to get out in the morning and just interact with your yard and see what's out there. Um, if you don't have to go very far, I have a big yard. We're letting it grow up but you can find bugs anywhere, even if you have a small yard. Just leave a little patch go and you'll attract all kinds of insects. So this morning there's a little bit of breeze and the grass is moving around a little bit which makes it more difficult so I'm taking multiple shots and hopefully as that grass moves around one of those shots will come into focus so the more shots you take the better chance you're going to have tack sharp focus and we're trying to focus on the butterfly's eyeball if we can so um, these guys are really docile this morning it got down in the 60s last night so I don't think they have warmed up yet so they're being very cooperative Let's get in and get a few more shots. So one of the tricks you can do is acquire focus early using manual focus and then just move the camera back and forth getting focus instead of trying to have autofocus on and focusing on the bug's eye. It definitely takes some practice to get a good sharp shot. So don't feel bad if you're not getting sharp shots right off the bat. It's just practice and practice and practice and take a lot of shots. If you take a lot of shots, you'll eventually get something. Delete all the blurry ones, keep the good ones. One, uh, one of these skippers back in there sitting on top of a piece of grass. I'm going to try to stick in my camera on them and see if we can get in close to them. All right. So 
So you may be wondering about settings. What settings should you use when you're out shooting macro? So it's actually pretty easy. So I'm gonna set my camera up in aperture priority, which allows me to set the aperture. The camera sets the shutter speed. I turn on auto ISO, so the camera controls the ISO. So essentially the only thing that I'm controlling is the aperture. And basically I keep it the same for all the macro shots I'm doing of insects. I just keep it at F8. And F8 combined with that 105 millimeter macro lens and the extension tube that I have on here creates a very soft, smooth background, blurs out, which isolates the insect against that background. And that's exactly what you want. So again, just to recap, aperture priority. Your aperture would be F8, auto ISO, and you're good to go. So super simple and uh, just really easy settings to use. So uh, there's no, no mystery with it. So once you keep that, that's good to go. So, all right. So one of the things that's really cool about spending time with insects is you get to watch their behavior. And now the sun has hit this area of grass. And I notice that all the skipper butterflies have started to open their wings up and are just warming up, uh, getting the dew off them from the night. So that's uh, when you're out photographing stuff, the more that, of that kind of behavior, um, history, anything like that that you can notice, the better your shot's gonna be because you know what's going on and because you know what's going on, you can take advantage of that by photographing it and documenting the situation. So let's get this little guy, he has his wings wide open now and it's just warming up in that sun. It must feel pretty good. With digital, one of the things that you can do when you're out here is you can definitely check to see if you have focus. Zoom in and just make sure that I'm getting something with focus on it. Oh yeah, there's a nice one. And that one will be deleted. Uh, there's another nice one. So at least we know we got a couple images that are sharp. So I've been photographing these and uh, taking some video of them. Uh, what I've watched here is that as they warm up, they just lift off the leaves and take off. So you can see there's probably maybe a dozen, two dozen here. When I first got out just about a half hour ago and now that they're warm up, they're just taking off and they're just leaving. So just a few left. I do like the light on them. So I'm gonna head in here with the camera and see if I can get one last picture of these guys without spooking them out. There's just a few left and I have to go in deep in the grasses here. So the key to get close is just to move slowly. Don't freak them out. They're just trying to hang out, warm up with the sun. I'm sure you can relate to that if you've ever been out in a cold winter, woke up in a tent in the winter and tried to get out of your sleeping bag. They're doing the same thing cold fall trip into the boundary waters or something. So it's getting pretty bright out. The insects are getting really active, so it's a lot more difficult to photograph them. Um, but there's a grasshopper down there. <laughs> Grasshoppers are really hard to photograph. He has a lot of dew on his body, hopefully. And maybe he'll still be cold, but he is in the sunlight. So I'm going to put the sun behind him and backlight him if I can possibly get in there and hopefully at least get one shot off. Sometimes it's just about repeating shot after shot until you get what you're looking for. So if you have an idea of what you want to find, um, just work at it and eventually you'll end up getting that shot. Might be a couple days, uh, but you'll get that shot. Sometimes instead of walking around your yard or wherever you're at trying to find bugs, you can just wait and they'll show up eventually. So find yourself a good flower or area section of the grass and then just hang out, 
wait and see what happens. So I can hear some buzzing around here, so I know there's some hoverflies. Um, so maybe some hoverflies will come in here. And here comes a skipper butterfly just flew into my scene. Hopefully something will land somewhere in front of me. And because I'm just waiting and staying still, I'm observing what's going on in the environment in front of me. And then I'm also allowing the insects to get used to my presence so that they get more comfortable and they'll feel comfortable landing down in front of me. So this particular area has some interesting grass. We have some daisies, some buttercups, um, and then some goldenrod. It's not flowering yet, so it is a good habitat for them. And I can see a lot of the skipper butterflies in here just coming and hanging out. So we'll just um, wait here, see what we get. I do know that there's a horse fly flying around my head too, so if he landed on a Daisy, that would be a pretty sweet shot. Here we go. Skipper butterfly just came in. Try to get this guy. So if uh, you can, um, it's a good practice even if you have pictures of enough uh, insects and you want to try to get something else, but it's good practice to try to focus, to get these things in focus. So you're, the key to the nailing the focus is focus on their eyeballs. So you want the closest eye to the camera to be completely in focus. And then because we're shooting macro, a lot of the scene is actually going to be out of focus and that's okay, especially if the background is out of focus. So ideally we want a very smooth, out of focus background probably just a few colors. So the simpler the background, the better it is. You got a few more skipper butterflies in here. Oh, there's a hoverfly over there. Hoverflies are pretty busy, um, so they're kind of hard to get. I'm gonna see if I can stalk this one over there. Just move in slowly. Dew is all over my legs now. Come on, Mr. Hoverfly. Oh, there he is. so interesting when you're reviewing the images after you get them to see all the textures on the eyes. I just find it absolutely fascinating. The small little hairs coming off the back of the insects. Uh, it's just like a whole other world that you generally ignore uh, in favor of just looking at everything big. But when you slow down and you take the time to look for insects, observe their behavior, it's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> There's a butterfly flying right in front of me and I couldn't uh, think so I had to stop and look at it. Oh. There we go. Now move back this way. It's just about waiting for them to come to you. Because once those insects are used to you, they'll come around. And if you're not getting an insect right away, you can just wait and maybe photograph some flowers. Right now the dew on the daisies is just absolutely beautiful. Oh, here we go. I've got a fly that came in. Try to get a picture of this guy. Oh, he's hanging out on top of a buttercup. I just noticed a grasshopper. He's just moving around. He must have came up the stem of this plant trying to see what's going on. Why is this crazy photographer out here doing? Yeah, 
grasshoppers are kind of the hardest ones to get. Insects must have gotten used to me now because there are a ton of them showing up. Lots of different flies, grasshoppers, butterflies. They're all just coming here. And it's mainly because I've just been waiting for them to show up. And the longer that I wait here, the more active this area is gonna be with insects. Well, it's about an hour and a half now that I've been out shooting and the sun has really uh, bathed the entire yard and sunlight and the bugs are getting really busy and it's hard to photograph them. So I think that's a good morning. So if I got one or two good shots out of this session, I think that's a good uh, gauge of a really good morning session with the bugs. So I hope you learned something today and uh, I hope you shoot with me again. And always remember, you gotta flow your own flow. We'll see you later. Oh, itchy bugs, itchy, getting bit up by mosquitoes, oh no.